Boys and girls, welcome! Today I want to talk about something you've been waiting for. I want to talk about miking guitar speakers. To be more precise, I want to talk about combining, blending several guitar speakers and about blending several microphones. Blending mics and speakers is not that easy, but it is the best way to achieve some interesting and unique guitar tones, and that's what we want to do. You might have heard that I have released a guitar tone course called High Gain Guitar Tone Crafting at Pro Mix Academy. And today I'm going to show you a part of that course, the part where I speak about the speaker setup, the microphone setup, and where I walk you through the different microphones and show you how I combine them. That course is about creating the guitar tones for three different songs from scratch. That means we start with the DIs and end up with final guitar tones and almost a final mix. <laughs> So this is a part of high gain guitar tone crafting. Enjoy and see you later. Welcome to my live room, the room of boom. And let me show you my microphone and cabinet setup for this course. We are using two four by 12 cabinets from Mesa Boogie. The oversized ones, industry standards, right? We all love this cab, but it's there's a difference between those two cabinets the right one is loaded with the stock speakers the celestian mesa boogie voiced vintage 30s 8 ohm version and the left one is loaded with four different speakers we've got three eminence speakers the db77 mick thompson signature speaker that you might know from one of my videos and we've got the Eminence Swamp Thang, we got another Eminence speaker, the DV75, and we got a warehouse WGS speaker called Reaper 50. So, a lot of different speakers, but even more microphones. That means we have a lot of options. We're back at the control room and I want to talk about miking guitar cabs in general first. So a lot of people think it's rocket science, it's very complicated, but it's actually not. It's fairly simple. For me there are two things that matter, two things that you need to understand when you're miking a guitar cabinet. So first is, the more you go into the middle of the speaker with your microphone, the brighter it sounds. So if it's too bright, move the microphone more to the outside. That's it. That's the first thing. The second thing is that if it sounds too boomy, if you have too much low end, move the microphone away from the speaker. That will make it sound thinner. Um, there's something called proximity effect, especially with ribbon mics, um, with figure of eight patterns. It can get quite boomy if you're very close. But here's something else that is also important. If you plan to blend several microphones, that's what I want to do today. I might use one microphone for a certain tone, but probably we're gonna blend some microphones. You absolutely want them in phase. And I highly recommend to have those microphones at the same distance to the speaker. Try to get the capsules to the same distance. You can't do that perfectly, but as close as possible. And then later you can fine tune the phase relationship digitally. I can show you how that works. So if you just move one microphone away from that speaker, it's not gonna be in phase with the other ones and that's gonna cause trouble, okay? You don't wanna do that unless you only wanna use that microphone. Okay, so remember, all you need to know is you go more to the middle, it gets brighter. More to the outside, it gets darker. And if it's too boomy, get away from the speaker. Two simple things. 
By the way, I prefer having the microphone pointing straight at the speaker. And if it's too bright, I will move it away from the middle as I just told you. I don't like angling the microphone a lot because to me it has the same effect than, than, than moving it. I can show you exactly what I mean in a minute. And angled setups are not that easy to recall. So I prefer having the mic like looking straight at the speaker. And I can show you what I mean. I can show you what I just uh, told you because I got my laptop here. I think you, you cannot see it. Where I can control the Dynamount you have seen. So the Dynamount um, is a mic robot. Fancy shit, right? So I can control that one. And it's a an SM57 facing an Eminence DV77 speaker uh, by the way I'm, I'm playing still the same guitar but now i'm playing my beloved brunetti extra lead and it's boosted uh, by a tube screamer and uh, the mic position i have right now sounds like this sounds pretty nice and as you can see here I've already moved the microphone I want to show you how it sounds when I move the microphone right into the middle have a listen so it gets brighter right it still sounds okay if you ask me But you have more high-end bite, more rattle. I forgot to tell you one thing. I'm On every microphone I'm using a little EQ, I always do that. So we have a low cut and a high cut filter. So if I remove that one, and it's just it's all so gentle. So the low cut is at 56 Hertz and the high cut is at 11 kilohertz. So let me just turn that off. I guess we will get more fizzle. Can you hear that? So let's move the microphone slightly to the outside. And it immediately gets a lot darker. And this seems to be a good compromise. It's still kind of bright and aggressive and you have some high-end grind. But not too much. So if you want to aggra sound aggressive, that's a good setting. Let's turn on the EQ again. If we go furthermore, to the outside of the speaker. The grind disappears in favor of, let's say, the actual voice of the speaker. So now you can hear the vocal mid-range of that speaker. And that sounds beautiful. All those mids that have been covered by the, by the you know, fizzle. And this is the setting I used before. Sounds great to my ears, but you know, if we need more aggression, I can just move it a little more into the middle. Now, let me show you. If I um, angle the microphone a little more into the middle, see what happens. It just gets brighter again. Same effect like just moving the microphone back to the middle. And uh, let me show you this. This is the preset that I call balance now. The one I just dialed in before. Now I have another preset where I keep the microphone in the middle, but tilt it, you know, angle it. And it sounds pretty much the same. Let's switch to the other one.
doesn't really make a difference. And as I told you, I prefer um, having the microphone straight, pointing straight at the speaker because it's just easier to recall. Oh, now I'm in the middle, that's too bright. I wanna go here. I like that. All right, let's check out all the other microphones. That's gonna be fun. Let's see how they sound. So this is one of my main mics and I think it just sounds balanced. It sounds, it just sounds right to my ears. Let's check out the 57 on the Vintage 30. That one's gonna sound a little brighter. First of all, because the Vintage 30 is a little brighter or a little more harsh, like some people say. I also have the microphone slightly more uh, closer to the middle. Let's switch. So that sounds tighter and more aggressive. Just as good as if you ask me. I think now that microphone is exactly at that point where, you know, where the dust cap of the speaker ends. That sounds a little more direct and a little more aggressive than the eminent speaker. Let's go back to the eminence. So those are our, our first two main microphones. One is rather warm and the other one is more aggressive. What else have we got? So let's try the ribbon mic. You know, because dynamic mics are known for having a certain mid bump, for sounding in your face and for mostly being perfect for guitars. They don't have a lot of low end, they don't have like a, a linear high end uh, and some kind of mid bump. And the mid bump of the 57 is just perfect for metal. So let's switch to the ribbon mic, which will sound quite different. Let's start with the 57. So that's very different, right? It's the same speaker, but it sounds a lot fatter. It doesn't sound that direct and you don't have a lot of mid bite. Darker, rounder, fuller. Nice. That Bayer dynamic, um, Ribbon microphone is, is my favorite ribbon uh, and it's actually the only one that I not only use for blending but sometimes also use on its own. But it will never have the aggression and the, the, the direct sound of a 57. Let's go back to the 57. So if you want to have a lot of attack in the palm mutes, that is a lot better. But let's try to combine those speakers, right? Because, you know, maybe the ribbon can fatten up the 57. And how do we do that? So we start with the 57 and we, uh, we add the other microphone and then we put one of those mics out of phase. Let's do that now. Oh, that sounds pretty good because it cancels out really nicely. And again, that is because I tried, you know, to have the same distance from both capsules to the speaker. We can now fine tune this by delaying one of the microphones and you, it's, it's a very, very slight delay. So it's only samples, not milliseconds. I can do that up here. You can see, I can just click here and move the, or delay the microphones by one sample. Let's try this one. And you can hear it's getting even better. Let's try one more step. Now it's getting worse. That seems to be the perfect setting. I think both speakers, this one is a little louder. Let's, 
let's fine tune the volume. I want them to cancel out as good as possible. That was nice. Now let's flip the phase again. Let's see what happens. Nice. That just sounds like a fuller representation of that speaker, of the sound in the room. You have to be careful though when you combine microphones because it's always getting louder if you add more microphones. So uh, I will try to compensate that in your course. Right now I'm hearing, I'm hearing it a lot louder whenever I uh, add a microphone. Let me just compare it. We go back to the 57 alone and add the other mic. Yeah, but this is just making things fuller. Like 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 it's like adding adding the full color to a, to a picture in a way. Let's see if we can do the same thing with the eminence mic. Let's start with the eminence mic. Add the ribbon. Flip the face. Same setting. And boom. That also sounds a lot fuller, but it might be a little too much low end now. Let's see if I move the, the 57 on the eminence back to the middle. That's better. So we have the aggression from the 57. And more low end from the ribbon mic. Oh, that's fun, that's fun. All right, so uh, let's turn off the ribbon again and bring back the 57 to its original position. What else have we got? Let's have a look. Um, so yeah, we got a condenser mic as well, a tube condenser mic. A very expensive one, but it sounds cool on guitars. But you can use a lot of different condenser microphones. A lot of them work, and the main difference will be, for me, they are like in between a ribbon and a dynamic. So they usually have a little more low end than a dynamic. Not the f full uh, boomy low end of a typical ribbon. And they don't have the pronounced mid-range of a dynamic microphone, but they're kind of closer. They just have, they just offer a different perspective at the mids. The mids are more linear, less in your face, and that can be a good thing. Let's hope that it's true what I'm saying here. Let's have a listen to that microphone. We start with the 57 at the V30 again. <laughs> and switch to the SERNT tube microphone. Like I said, it's getting darker. You know, you don't have those those in your face mids anymore. The lower mids and the the low end is a little fuller, a little more linear. Uh, let's move on. Another microphone that I've showed you before is the 57 on the Swamp Thang, and that's our brutal microphone. So that speaker sounds a little more hollow, not as balanced as the other two. Let's see what happens. I mean, this one can be used alone. I'm sure, like, we can use this one on the death metal example. That's gonna sound cool. Kind of swampy, hollow, throaty. Not on lead guitars, maybe. 
Uh, let's see if, what happens if we combine it with the 57 on the Vintage 30. Again, flip the face. Perfect distance. Fifty seven alone. Swamp Thang. Grong, grong, grong. It had, that, that, that speaker, the Swamp Thang, has so much character in the mid. That raw, 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 swampy. So here's the next microphone. I have told you about that Super Balls microphone, right? That ribbon. Um, and that one is pretty much on the outside, on the edge of the speaker, because I just want to capture some low end. The idea behind this one is that in case the 57s need more low end, and even more low end than the ribbon, the other ribbon, can give us, we still have this option. So have a listen to this speaker alone. Serious low end and nothing else. But what I will do is I will add, before I combine it with other microphones, I will add a um, high cut. Pretty soft, you know, but it starts with a start. Uh, it's 400 already. So we end up with just a low end. This is important. You want to do this before you combine it with other speakers because that filter is going to change the phase response at that frequency. So um, you want to do that first and then you want to check the phase with the other speakers. So, all right, let's take the 57 and add the Super Balls mic. Not doing much. Let's flip the phase. Here we go. I think I don't have to delay that one. That just sounds great. Turn it off again. <laughs> if you want balls, now you got them. I would recommend to to especially if, we, if you reamp to record uh, that channel that microphone separately so you can tr can control it in the mix because this can be really dangerous. It just sounds so cool. Take one of those combinations and next step is to compare the amps on an actual song. So let's start working on the first song. I will try to tell you what my vision is and then we try to get closer to it. Let's go. So we're not gonna start with the first song now. I'm very sorry because this has only been a part of the whole course. If you're interested in that course, click the link below. What else? I'll be coming up with some really cool new videos very soon. Uh, I promised you to check out the Jensen speakers. I promised you to check out the oversized Marshall cabinet. I'm working on that. I'm also working on some drum stuff. So this will be very cool. One thing I forgot to say is everything you've just seen is also possible with IRs. So if you are not using real speakers, real cabinets, if you are using IRs and you want to achieve some unique tones, you should start blending different IRs. And all the principles are the same. The tools are the same. You need to get those signals in phase to make them sound great. You need to delay them. You need to you know, fine tune them, find the right levels, everything that you've just seen. So uh, try that with IRs. If you want to get some great IRs, get my new Rainbows and Chainsaws pack that has been released by Bogren Digital because that's for lazy people. No, that's that's only for lazy people because those IRs are already in phase. You just have to blend them. That's too easy. No, don't get, don't get them. Don't get them. Uh, there's no link below. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm the worst salesman ever. Whatever, yeah. Get the chorus, get the IRs, uh, make me rich and famous. Thanks for watching. Um, subscribe to my email list, uh, ring the bell on this channel, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. The usual bullshit. I see you in hell, motherfuckers. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.